Hey, and welcome back. Today we're looking at one of Behringer's newer microphone introductions, the BA-19A. A couple years ago, Behringer introduced a pair of microphones that appeared to me like obvious clones of some specific industry standard microphones. One of these mics, the BA-19A, is a condenser boundary microphone specifically tailored towards bass drums and other low-end frequency instruments, such as a piano or bass. If you're looking at this mic, and it seems to be a similar form and shape to another famous mic made by Shure, you probably know exactly what Behringer was modeling this after. That mic from Shure typically runs $240 new, while this mic from Behringer comes in at just under $80. The reason I decided to pick up this microphone was not because I have any issues with my current bass drum mic, but I love the convenience of using a boundary mic as a gigging drummer. Most times, I'm hauling not only my own drums, but my own mics, so cutting down on extra equipment can be a great help towards getting in and out of gigs simple and fast. There's a ton of options out there to get rid of the mic stand from a bass drum, like hoop mounts or internal mounts, but obviously the simplest option would be to not have to carry any equipment around to mount a mic at all. A boundary mic can provide exactly that option by just setting this mic on either a towel, pillow, or whatever muffling you have inside of your drum. Additionally, in a studio application, you'll oftentimes use multiple mics on the bass drum in varying positions. So you could use this boundary mic inside your drum, maybe for more attack, while adding a different style of kick mic outside to pick up more of the body and tone from the drum. I ordered my mic from Amazon, and as you'll see, it's very simply packed just the mic case with a sleeve around it inside of your standard shipping box. I think it's cool that Behringer typically includes a small rigid case with their microphones and it's one less thing to worry about buying as an accessory. A couple features I found interesting about this mic is the blue light indicator to let you know if the mic is receiving phantom power, which is required being that this is a condenser. Also on the back of the mic you'll find a small switch to adjust the frequency curve if you're looking to do any of that before you go into your mixer or your DAW. For this video I'll be doing a comparison of this microphone against my other bass drum mic, a Shure Beta 52. I included the same playing sample with the full 3 mic setup with slight EQ, processing and effects, followed by just the raw bass drum mic audio afterwards. Once we get through the demo, I'll give you my thoughts and some quick tips for using the Behringer BA-19A. From listening to the samples, I think the quality level is almost identical between the two mics. They both are able to get nice clean signals at similar gain levels, and I think as a punchy tight option, it does the job. I think the Behringer has a bit more low end, but that could also be from the benefit of a fully internal position inside the drum. For me, to get the Shure inside the bass drum would be a real hassle, and as soon as my bass drum mic or stand would slide, it could be totally altered and it's much easier to just drop the Behringer inside and be good to go. If I was in a position where I had a bass drum without a porthole, the Behringer would become almost useless. But for most of the drums I gig with, in situations where I'd be asked to mic my bass drum, the head does have a porthole. 
One of the reasons I was encouraged to pick up a boundary mic was based off the bass drum muffling product I got called The Kicker by Sonatus Acoustics. The Kicker has a small track on the inside of it, which is the perfect size for these boundary mics, and you can adjust the position back and forth very easily. I made a separate video all about that device, and you'll find that link down below or on my channel if you're interested. The only problem you might have with just setting this mic inside the bass drum and forgetting about it is the cable will hang out of your porthole and rest on the head. I can see a situation where this cable creates an unwanted vibrating or rattling sound as the head vibrates with the drum. I found a simple solution for this is to use a cable strap and just velcro the cable to one of the tension rods to get the XLR cable from resting on the porthole. All in all, I bought this with the intention of using it live, and for me, cutting down on things I need to bring to gigs was the goal. With that said, I'm not a huge fan of the case that's included, as it's a bit oversized for the mic, and not all that protective. I opted to just take a microphone bag from a different mic I own, and throw this mic in there, and pack it in my hardware bag. It takes almost no room that way, and will just be easier to not leave behind at the end of the night. I totally recommend this mic to anybody looking for an affordable, yet high quality sounding bass drum mic. Considering you won't need to buy a stand, you'll save even more money in the long run, and in most live situations, you're looking for a low end thump with a quick decay, which is exactly what this mic does. In my personal experience, Behringer has really stepped up their game over the years, and they find a way to make a lot of quality products for a great price. You can obviously spend more and find better solutions, but I can't see a reason why I'd need to upgrade this mic anytime soon. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. Until next time, thanks.